the latest model data is coming in on this next winter storm that's on the way later this week. This comes as timing and totals for snow, ice, and more are also being pinpointed. This video has the full update on that, as well as the temperatures in the pattern ahead. Thank you very much for taking time out of your day to tune into this update video. I'm going to start by breaking down the winter storm that's on the way as we finish this week and then push towards the upcoming weekend. Then later on in the video, I'll also talk temperatures as many parts of the United States, even if you're not seeing snow, are remaining very cold as we go through the next several days. Here we go, though. It's time that we're starting to look at these specific models, and I think the GFS model does a pretty good job of showing how the snowstorm is anticipated to go as we go from its initializing point here all the way through the end of this system, and it's really only going to be a main 48-hour span where we see this thing move from down here in the south central U.S. to the east coast. But here's the initializing point of this storm, and I think this model has been pretty consistent in showing a batch of rain turning over to snow right down here as you come out of south Texas and parts of Louisiana, on up here into north Texas, into Arkansas, parts of Oklahoma, and then down into southeast Kansas as well as southwest Missouri. Again, this is for the middle of the night as we go out of Thursday into the early part of our Friday, January 10th. And one thing that I did want to mention to you here is it looks like, at least initially with this storm, that rain-snow line or wintery mix line may be a little bit further north, cutting out some of those snow totals here into parts of northern Texas and forcing them a little bit further up here into Oklahoma, Arkansas, and Missouri. So wall confidence was rising for most of these zones, even north Texas in the last video. It really looks like it's mostly going to be Oklahoma and Arkansas and southern Missouri that wins out out of this particular event for snow. Might be a little bit more lackluster in the Dallas-Fort Worth Metroplex if this latest guidance continues to hold. One place that's now uptrending in the latest guidance, though, is as we especially see this storm begin pushing to the east out of Thursday and into the real daylight hours here of the afternoon on our Friday. Friday, coming out of southeast Texas with the low pivoting down here along the Gulf Coast. That allows for a lot of this warmer air to be stuck down here south of this line. And to the north side of this line that I have drawn, we could be breaking out into snow anywhere from Arkansas to northern Mississippi, through parts of northern Alabama, over to Georgia, and even the Carolinas, where we could see some surprise flakes, at least as the system initializes in these zones with the precipitation on Friday afternoon. As we go through the rest of the afternoon and evening, the models are trending to where we're going to see a little bit of a warmer nudge coming up through these southeast states, though. So even if you start with some snow in parts of central and northern Alabama, Mississippi, coming over back over into parts of Georgia and the Carolinas, we will see a warmer push, and that could lead to more freezing rain, especially if you look at some of this guidance as we go through the rest of our Friday afternoon and evening. We'll have to see how long we can stay in the snow, because that could certainly lead to heavier totals here. A better chance for the heavy snow, though, pushing through parts of Kentucky, Tennessee, and then on up here into parts of Indiana and Ohio as we see that more uninterrupted swath likely making its way through these zones. As we go through the nighttime here, Friday night pushing into our Saturday, the low pressure pivoting from the Gulf Coast and jumping right on up here along the Carolina shores and into the Delmarva region where we could briefly see a heavier swath of snow also pushing here through some of the mid-Atlantic states. Does this look like a blizzard? It does not look like it as of now. Those crazy thumbnails showing the major blizzard out of this are probably going to be wrong, as I was saying in yesterday's update. Look at what the GFS model, which was the more bullish model on a possible East Coast snowstorm scenario here. Look at what it's showing as we go through the day Saturday. Really heavy snow may be developing right offshore, but staying offshore. And then once we get beyond this system, we're just looking at cooler and drier air, unless we're seeing lake effect snow in most spots, as a quieter pattern for many spots fills in as we go into the upcoming weekend into Sunday. Day especially. With that being said, I want to go ahead and give you a look at the forecasted totals. These are not the final snow totals that are being projected here, but we're going to start with the GFS model, then look at the European model next, comparing the two and what they're showing out of this storm. First of all, here, just through the first half of this system, as we go from Thursday through the end of our Friday using the GFS model, you can see it indicates a thin band of snow beginning from south central Oklahoma and far north central Texas around Dallas or just north of town, and then that expands as it moves northeast towards the Ohio Valley and Midwest as well as on over here to the northern parts of the states that line the Gulf Coast, as well as the southeast U.S. Anywhere in the blues is where this guidance is indicating at least a couple inches of snow, but you can see right in here where you see some of those purples and pinks, that's where the GFS model is indicating possibly a better chance of more like 6 to 10, maybe even towards 12 inches of snow. Could someone briefly see a foot in a place like Arkansas? Wouldn't fully rule that out of this system. Certainly something to keep an eye on. Also, what we'll be keeping an eye on is the snow totals that could continue east of there. It looks like the stripe of the heaviest snow became may become a little bit thinner again as this continues east of the Appalachians. We could certainly get some decent accumulation all the way down the Appalachian chain with at least a few inches, many spots in those highest elevations picking up more like six plus. 
Um, you can see even a few inches further down the Appalachian chain and in North Georgia, Northwest South Carolina and Western North Carolina. And then notice here, the GFS model indicating some snow coming here and combining with some older energy that's bringing a good bit of snow into the interior Northeast. And then we've also got a better chance directly related to the storm for at least a few inches of snow plus as you come right along that Delmarva and New Jersey coastline. Now that I've shown you the GFS model guidance for this storm, I do want to briefly overview the European model and what it is showing for those same increments in terms of our snowfall totals. Starting off here with the snow just by the time we go through our Friday evening using this guidance, you can see overall it lines up pretty similarly with the GFS in showing this general zone that I'm circling getting some of that heaviest snowfall or at least some snowfall in general by this point in time. One difference I'm going to say that this European has from the GFS is that it definitely includes less of Missouri, Illinois, Indiana, and parts of Ohio by this point in time getting heavier snow totals as opposed to two plus inches of snow, in many cases three or four plus like the GFS was showing. The Euro is showing more like only a dusting to a couple of inches in these zones. Certainly a trend that needs to be monitored as those zones are kind of on the edge in terms of where we're going to see the heaviest totals. Then as we come on down here into a place like Arkansas, one similarity I see between these two pieces of guidance is that it shows this general zone getting that heaviest stripe of snow that could even exceed 8 inches in a few spots. Certainly something we're going to have to track. One big, big difference though as we go deeper down the track of the storm as we go from Friday into our Saturday is the fact that the European model does not carry quite as much snow once you come beyond these Appalachian Mountains. And look at this, as you come on over here into places like the Mid-Atlantic, sure a couple inches into the coast maybe of North Carolina and Virginia, but not as much on up there further up the shores towards a place like New Jersey, for example. So certainly something we're going to have to track as these totals are really becoming tricky and the models are not fully in agreement just yet. With that in mind, that leads me into the final part of this discussion for the snowstorm for now before a future video. I want to go ahead and recap the January 9th through 12th time frame for snow zones using my custom graphic right here at ONW. If you find yourself in any of the bright blues on screen, you have at least the possibility of snow during this time frame and that especially elevates with those other snow chances I've got highlighted back on up there into the mountain west. But our main low pressure system that's going to track through the south central and then towards the eastern United States in the coming days, of course. It's indicated by that low pressure system that's going to start in Texas and then push, push east. Best chance of heavy snow in any of these blue zones, and that's where I think at least a few inches of snow will be possible, especially with at least one model or more. That goes anywhere from Texas and Oklahoma all the way on up to parts of southern New England for now. Best chance for the heaviest accumulation that we can say with the most confidence right now, though, it's going to come somewhere right in this general stripe that I'm highlighting on your screen right here. Some of the other zones could definitely get at least a few inches of snow, but this is the high, highest confidence zone, not only for a few inches, but maybe even more like six inches or more in some locations. Also keep in mind, if you find yourself in the pinks on screen, that includes parts of East Texas, Southern Arkansas, Northern Louisiana, pushing into Mississippi, Alabama, Georgia, the Southern Appalachians, including the Western Carolinas, into parts of Virginia, and even places like Maryland, with the track of the system, but depending on exactly where it goes, we could get some dangerous freezing rain or sleet in these zones that could cause major travel impacts. Be on the lookout for that, and I'll cover more of those exact totals possible out of those types of impacts in the next update. No matter which way you slice it, though, it is a cold rest of the week ahead, as, especially as forecasted right here by these National Digital Forecast Database numbers here. These are the exact temperatures being projected for high temperatures as you go day by day, at least through the next three to four. Low temperatures are going to be even cooler than this. You can access your specific forecasts at weather.gov. That's the National Weather Service website. But start, starting here with those high temperatures forecasted for our Wednesday, January 8th, Notice especially right here as you come east of the front range in the Rockies there, and then right on up here to the north side of the lower Mississippi Valley in the southeast U.S., if you're around or just north of this line, you are expected to be below freezing for a high temperature Wednesday afternoon, but some spots further up here into the northern tier with that border of Canada, closer to 15 to 20 for the peak temperature during the day. A very cold pattern, and it's really cold even all the way on up to their end of the Rockies where we're seeing highs only in the 20s and 30s. And the Gulf Coast 40s, that's below average for this time of year. Into our Thursday, notice what's going on down here. With winter weather expected to begin breaking out down into the south central U.S., it makes sense that highs are only forecasted to be into the 30s pushing towards maybe the low 40s at the higher end, continuing with 20s across a lot of other zones of the U.S. as well as you push on up into the Great Lakes, Ohio Valley, and into your northeast. By Friday, this swath of the southern U.S., again, as we continue to see snow expanding in some of these zones, even cooler. And again, even if you see a high of, say, 35 or 36 or 37 in a place like Mississippi, Alabama, Georgia, or the Carolinas on Friday, 
If that's the peak temperature and then it starts snowing, a dynamic cooling effect may occur, and that could continue your snow or at least chance of some form of frozen or wintery precipitation as we go deeper through the day. Certainly looking pretty favorable for even some of the southern snow chances that we're going to get out of this particular system as a result of these temperatures. Saturday, yet another cold day. As behind this system, we're even going to begin to see even more reinforced jet stream dips coming into the eastern United States. And that leads me right here into the recap for this video, of course, as the next winter storm's impacts were what I was really talking about through a lot of this video. They're a lot clearer, as many spots are going to be seeing at least 2 to 3 to 4 to maybe even 5 or 6 inches of snowfall as a result of this system. The exact totals of snow and ice will be pinpointed better for this system in a future video update. But for now, I just want to let you know, of course, I was right. The Northeast Blizzard signal, unless it comes back, it faded away on the models, and all of those crazy clickbaiters are not going to be correct more than likely unless something significant changes. I'll keep you updated in case of those changes, though, if you subscribe right down below. Man, I appreciate all the recent support. I'll see you next time. One Nation Weather.